Are we looking at the limits of Deadpool's regenerative powers? Fans may be flocking to theaters for Deadpool and Wolverine, but critics are split. Reviews for Deadpool and Wolverine poured in quickly ahead of the film's wide release date. While most of them point to a strong performance for the Marvel Cinematic Universe's only big screen release for 2024, the movie's critics' rating on Rotten Tomatoes doesn't quite reach the heights of the two films that came before it. In the days leading up to its release, Deadpool and Wolverine fluctuated around an 80% critics' rating. There's still plenty of time for that to change, but as it stands, it falls slightly short of the 85% and 84% scores that 2016's Deadpool and 2018's Deadpool 2 have settled into. Something close to 80% isn't bad at all, but considering the hype around the movie, it's probably a little lower than anybody expected. After all, Deadpool and Wolverine marks the MCU debuts of, well, Deadpool and Wolverine, and its R rating is both a welcome sight for longtime fans of the Deadpool films, as well as a breath of fresh air for a franchise that had long stayed family friendly for Disney. That's Wolverine. You're damn straight it is. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. Time will tell if Deadpool and Wolverine makes up for the comparatively lukewarm box office figures generated by recent projects like Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, and the Marvels. But while critics have been saying a lot of nice things about the film, some have pointed out quite clearly that it might not be everyone's cup of tea. A look at some of the more prominent early reviews for Deadpool and Wolverine paints a picture of a film that could be the shot in the arm the MCU has needed for some time. As one critic wrote on X, the movie is a wildly entertaining crowd-pleaser full of humor and heart, and a glorious return to form for the MCU that builds on the Marvel legacy while breaking new ground. It's the must-see blockbuster of the summer. Let's give the people what they came for! The Daily Beast had similar thoughts about Deadpool and Wolverine potentially re-energizing the MCU, while acknowledging that it might not be for those who aren't up to speed on their Marvel lore, or people who just dislike Deadpool and his irreverent brand of humor. Indeed, Deadpool and Wolverine is packed with fan service for longtime MCU fans, and has no shortage of snappy pop culture references and inside jokes. And that wasn't the only review that suggested that the movie might not have much appeal to the casual crowd. In a two-star review for the Los Angeles Times, Katie Walsh wrote that the film doesn't offer much substance or depth due to its focus on Marvel fan service and internet culture, and what she felt was a lack of plot and thin characterization. She said, while it will likely amuse its target audience of geeks and the terminally online, Deadpool and Wolverine is a whole lot of hot air and not much else. Let's give the people what they came for! Despite being on track to score a lower rating than its predecessors, and even with all those concerns about copious fan service, Deadpool and Wolverine still looks to be on track to become a huge summer hit. Forecasts suggest that the movie can make from $160 million to $170 million from North American theaters in its first weekend. That would allow it to hit two birds with one stone, surpassing Inside Out 2 as the most lucrative debut of 2024 so far while also garnering the biggest opening weekend ever for an R-rated film to beat out the original Deadpool. Passion of the Christ, then me. At least domestically. We beat them overseas, where there's no such thing as religion. An opening weekend that big would also allow Deadpool and Wolverine to practically double the domestic earnings of the MCU's last movie release, The Marvels, which spectacularly bombed at the box office. So with those projections in mind, fans shouldn't be too concerned about Deadpool and Wolverine underperforming in theaters, just because it hasn't impressed critics quite as much as the Merc with the Mouse first two big-screen forays. 